Well, look who's back. What? Oh, I'm in trouble for the thumbnail. I'm really, really sorry about that. Jace at Retro Games! Is that my foot jumper on? I am still wearing my Retro Games t shirt, but I just put a jumper on. Some smelly old jumper, just because I'm too cold in here. I'm too cold. I know, I know. You forgive me for the jumper and forgive me for bringing the Retro Games girls back. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I just missed them. <laughs> and I'm really curious to see if they boost our traffic again. Uh, putting the old ladies back on because they're just so beautiful and yes yes i know i pretend but you all know these ladies they're all ai generated and it just amazes me that ai can come up with such beautiful people just like bang there's some beautiful people for you what uh, they must be based on a catalog like a massive archive of amazing images um so these girls must actually exist and I'm clinging on to that because they are so ridiculous. I've basically fallen in love with every single Retro Games thumbnail girl. <laughs> what can I say? What can I say? I chose them all. I'm, I created them. I chose them. <laughs> if you don't like these sort of girls, if those aren't the girls for you, well, hard luck. They're, they're my preference and I like looking at them. <laughs> what can I say? <laughs> Move on, Jace. Move on. Hello, how are you? It is Friday. Check the camera. Oh, it's a bit of a wobbly camera. Uh, check the cameras. How are you? Uh, sorry about the jumper. Sorry about the thumbnail. Uh, what? It's Retro Games Day. Here I are. Are we, are we having a good day? Uh, I don't know. It's been a funny week here. Uh, it's been busy, uh, it's been crazy, a few crazy things have happened, it's been a bit... But it's okay, we've got through another week and here we are on the Friday. Now, before we get stuck into the show, I should say, um, I'm going to have a little break. This is the last episode for a few weeks. Oh! Calm down, calm, calm down, calm down. Um, <laughs> I'm having a little break. I did exactly the same thing last December. Um, we come into December, we have a What's in the Box show, or back then I think it was the Retro Games show, and then we have a little bit of break of a break while I build up for the Christmas special. Now the Christmas special is going to come on... I don't know the dates. <laughs> Hang on. So, so today's the, the 8th. Uh, so in 20 days, it'd be the that'd be too late. Uh, I don't know, but I'll, I'll do it the Friday before Christmas. The Christmas is on the Sunday, isn't it? So Retro Games Show could go live on the Friday, like normal Friday show. And it's the big Christmas show number two. <laughs> it's the big steaming number two. Uh, and so don't miss me too much. I'll be back in a couple of weeks with what I hope is going to be a lot of fun show. And I've saved up some really nice juicy items to show you on the Christmas show. So I hope you will all tune in. I hope it breaks the records of, as being a, a, one of our most popular show. That would be great. That would make my Christmas if everyone watched the Retro Games show uh, when it comes back in a couple of weeks time. Yes, I know, Retro Games show. Yeah, it's gonna last a long time. It will be an hour plus. Yes, serious, an hour plus. And even if I haven't got that much content, I should just stretch it out, stretch it out. Um, now, uh, slap yourself around the face. It's been a big week for gaming, hasn't it? It has this week. I always say any Retro Games news. Well, this week there really has been some amazing Retro Games news and that is all because of our good friends. Uh, started as DMA Design, uh, went on to become part of Rockstar and they released GTA 6, the trailer. There was leaks, there was subterfuge, there was some rumours of some developer's kid just spoiling it all and release everything the day before and then Rockstar had to release the demo early because there were so many leaks in the newspapers. It's just crazy and it just is amazing testament to the Grand Theft Auto franchise that can just bring on Do that much Bad luck, I uh, guess. chaos. <laughs> we 
Well, what did you think of the trailer? No, oh, shut up! Shut up! You're saying that's not retro. What are you talking about this for? This is a retro game show. Yes, but Grand Theft Auto, it's, it's an ongoing series, but it's a very, very important part of gaming as a whole. Um, it shows where gaming is headed. Rockstar, those guys, the, the GTA developers, they push video games in massive leaps ahead, don't they? They, they just, when they finally get around 10 years since GTA 5, when they finally get to release the new one, you know they are going to push the boundaries further on. Um, a level of quality that you just don't get. And it's amazing the amount of people uh, in the scenes. I, I've watched some of the deconstruction scenes and that scene on the beach with the man spraying the spray tan and the other jogger looking at his watch. And they've proven, there's been other analysis, has proven that is a real time video. That is, that is in game play. That is not some CGI fakery. They've analyzed it. People have analyzed it. Proper people, people who understand this stuff. It's not even running at 4K, that, that proves it. That they have, they have released that gameplay demo, it's still even running at 4K. If you were going to make a CGI version fake fakery, which they've never done anyway, the GTA team or Rockstar, um, then you're not gonna you're not gonna put it out less than 4K, are you? So yeah, the evidence is there. That is a real game, and it is so busy and populated and full of people and cars and amazing things. And um, honestly, I cannot wait to play it. I was just a little bit devastated by the. Coming in 2025. <laughs> now, as, a, uh, as myself and a lot of you guys uh, and ladies uh, get to this sort of age, you know, especially as a boy, uh, that's when all the diseases come. That's <laughs> We might not make it. I might not make it to GTA 6. And I want to. I want to see what it's like. I want to play that. So, yeah. A bit sad that it's taken so long, but I know the payoff will be in the quality of the game. And there's no doubt it will be the most groundbreaking game of all time, because they pre previous examples have done exactly the same. Um, so yeah, I'm very excited about GTA. And if you say, oh, it's not retro, that's not what I'm into. It's about the, surely we're all involved with the story of video games from the start, from me starting playing games with my Pong on 77, right up to today, it has been a massive journey. And GTA is part of that journey. And all the big games are still part of that journey. Call of Duty is part of that story. Um, so, you know, I don't care if you think, oh, you're not talking about retro stuff. This is this channel sucks. Because <laughs> I talk about video games because I am the first retro gamer, I've said this many times, the first retro gamer, I started collecting video games in the 90s because I loved video games. And I still love video games. So I still love all video games. Video games, video games, video games. And if you've got one thing to say about that, it's video games. And I will, I will not hear you say video games in that tone of voice. <laughs> you can say it in a nice tone of voice, please. Oh, okay, so what have we done? We've ticked off GTA. We've, t we've ticked off the audience. Uh, we've ticked off... Uh... Oh, you what in the box? <laughs> oh, what is in the box? That is what we do on a Friday. We look at all the latest stuff that's coming to the retrogames.co.uk website, the greatest place in the world to buy your classic video games. And it's been going longer than any other company in the world selling vintage video games. We're the first, we're the best, we're Everest. Everest replacement windows. These new frames are made from tough UPVC and they've got the famous Everest draft proofing. In fact, nowadays, this is the only draft you find up here. You only fit double glazing once, so fit the best Everest. <laughs> More retro, isn't it retro? Now, this week in the Retro Games office, we uh, bought a lovely collection for the net. Lots of 8-bit in this shop, in this uh, box today. Um, actually, before I get to that, we got... Uh, just just going to show you this. We got an Astro Wars this week. We don't get as many Astro Wars as you'd like. And it's nice to get one around Christmas time. Um, it's not in particularly stunning condition, but it is fully working. Uh, now we've covered, you've seen me all sitting, you've all seen me sitting on the toilet, playing me Astro Wars, uh, but there it is. Uh, I wish the camera was a little bit tilted. There, there, there. Uh, it's, a, it's a very nice example. Got the battery cover, the box is a bit, the box is a bit worn out, but this is from 1981, what do you expect? It's got, it's got the manual, it's got the manual. 
Uh, it's got a stain on the manual. But what can you do? But anyway, it just I thought I've got to put that on the show, even though I'm not going to play it on the show because I've played it before. You've all seen it. You all know what it is. But it is one of those games that conjures lots of Christmas memories for me. Uh, and so I had to put it on the show. Now, as I was saying, get to the point, Trust. Uh, as I was saying, this week our mate Steve sold us his NES collection. So we had a massive influx of NES stuff this week. Uh, makes a change from PlayStation, which has been the last two or three weeks has just been on PlayStation. Um, I'm not going to show all the gameplay for these because I've picked loads. But I just thought I'll get a nice, healthy mountain of NES stuff and show you what's come in and see what you think of it. Because there's some great titles and I will show some of them. Okay, first up, Battletoads. Yes, we've got Battletoads 1 and Battletoads versus Double Dragon. Now these games are by Rare. You know, the creators of Donkey Kong Country, Banjo-Kazooie, Conker's Bad Fur Day, Golden Eye. Um, but we've shown the games before, I don't need to show them again. But they are very rare and hard to find platform action games, aren't they? Platform action games. Uh, and just very nice copies in this week, moving on. Uh, now this is uh, Donkey, there, there is a NES series called the Classic Series. They've got silver stripy bands, here's two you can see. You've got the Donkey Kong and the Donkey Kong 3, but the, they're secondary issues in this Classic Series. Um, they're, they're love, it's a lovely design, I think there's a Popeye in the box as well that's in the same design. Um, classic, it's classic platform games, but really beautiful cartridges. I just like the design of those um, classics, arcade classics range. Okay, now here's a rare game by Nintendo, Nintendo First Party, and we will show this one. This game is called Clue Clue Land. got a clue land more like a <laughs> yeah but it's just a very rare highly regarded and hard to find NES action game from Nintendo first party coming back to rare of Battletoads fame uh, Cobra Triangle another rare rare game <laughs> a rare rare game it's a rare rare game it's like a rah rah skirt but less hairy <laughs> Were skirts hairy? No. Jace, what are you on about? What are you on about? Um, I, is this an excuse to put a photo of someone in a rah-rah skirt? <laughs> See, it was. It was. I knew it was. I knew it was. It takes me back to school disco days. Girls used to wear rah-rah skirts. That was a thing. It must have been... I was in middle school, so it must have been... Uh, I guess 1980-ish. Uh, yeah, and rah rah skirts were a big thing, and I just like the name. Rah rah! <laughs> I don't know, I just like it anyway. Cobra Triangle there. <laughs> Get over yourself, Jace. Uh, here's a rare one as well on the nest. Solomon's Key. Tecmo. We talked about this, I think I mentioned it last week. Tecmo's sliding puzzle fun. I, I love Solomon's Key, it was a great game. Let's check out Solomon's Key on the nest. And there's the label. It's a I mean, they're unboxed. Sure, they're unboxed, but they're UK issues and they're in beautiful condition. Uh, here's another rare one, Prince Valiant. Um, that is based on a cartoon series, believe it or not. But it's a cartoon series I have never watched. Uh, but, uh, uh, you know, if you want to put it on, I'll look over your shoulder. Uh, totally rad, dude. People do not say totally rad anymore. <laughs> Uh, this is a, a, again, it's a Jalico uh, coin. I've always think Jalico looks like it should be a bit of a Mexican word. It should be Jalico. Jalico. Like jalapenos. <laughs> it's just me, isn't it? <laughs> I sit surrounded by video games all day. Every day. And I have done for the last 30 odd years. Uh, this stuff goes through my mind when I'm listing, pricing, editing, uh, photographing, testing. It's, yeah, stupid stuff like that. Oh, Halako, Halako. <laughs> There's no excuse for this. I know, it's pathetic. It's pathetic. I, <laughs> I need to be lanced. <laughs> they used to do that, didn't they? Lance things. Um, okay, what about this? Swordmaster by Activision. Let's check it out.
Yeah, it's got a kind of moody look to it, hasn't it? It's got a kind of, yeah, Assassin's Creed kind of feel about the uh, label there. Uh, I really have picked a lot here, so I'm rushing a bit. Uh, Tiger Heli, bit of shoot 'em up action. Uh, very nice. Tiger Heli. Rhymes with smelly. I don't, <laughs> I don't know why. Uh, trog, trog. People used to call each other trogs. I can remember when I when I was at school and I, I had a particularly unattractive girlfriend. And I can remember my friends saying, "Oh, what are you with that trog for?" <laughs> so I went. <laughs> so that makes this game special. This game and that label that reminds me of, uh, you know, school time girlfriends. <laughs> Because they're a bunch of trogs. <laughs> Don't worry, none of them will be watching. Uh, I killed them all. Uh, Trojan! This is, a, this is a game by Capcom. Now we love Capcom. I haven't got a Spanish way of saying Capcom. Uh, and another highly rated arcade action game. Uh, Trojan. Okay, now this is a first party Nintendo game, and I love I love these. I mean, I guess if you're going to collect NES, the stuff you want to concentrate on first is the fast first party. Yeah, concentrate first on the first. First on the first party Nintendo stuff, so the stuff that Nintendo actually put out themselves. Uh, big game in Japan as well, Urban Champion for the Famicom. Uh, but I love the label here, it's got the graphics of the game, you can see them fighting it out. Uh, urban champion a bit of a, a is it a brawler a, a brawler early brawler I guess more first party now this one is called wrecking crew let's check out wrecking crew Yeah, that's got to be Mario, hasn't it? It is Mario. It's an alternative uh, Mario game that doesn't say the word Mario. That's special in itself, isn't it? It's very rare. First party. Nintendo game. Doesn't say Mario. It's got Mario in it. Wow. Uh, what about this? James Bond Jr. Doesn't someone... Doesn't PJ Venom love James Bond? He's probably got this game already. I remember he asked about the other James Bond game I showed. Uh, James Bond Jr. for the NES. <laughs> Uh, James Bond Jr. We showed uh, James Bond on the Mega Drive and it was 10 times better than I thought it ever would be. A lot of you agreed with me. I wouldn't say that is 10 times better than you thought it would be, is it? <laughs> oh well, uh, it is a classic, not going to show it, I've shown it before, but North and South, uh, the classic two player. Uh, nah. Defender of the Crown style strategy, fun action game, action strategy game, like a battle game. Um, but what I uh, noticed recently, they've re-released a new version of North and South for current consoles. You can get it on the Switch. You can get North and South on the Switch. Which is, wow, I need to check that out. And here's another retro classic came to the NES, surprisingly. It's not a game that you thought would be on there. And that is Pirates by Sid Meier. Oh, wow, that is a classic game. It's not, it's not probably as, as exciting as the Amiga version. You haven't got the map, have you? It, doesn't come, it never came with the map, not the uh, NES version. Uh, but a Pirates, absolute classic game. And yeah, there's more. <laughs> there's a lot, isn't there, today? Now, this is a uh, Road Fighter, and you'll, you'll remember Road Fighter, probably more famous for the MSX version. Uh, uh, released by Powercom, it's a Konami game. Let's check out Road Fighter on the NES. Okay, so this is a very simple weave and dodge racing game with a tiny little road, uh, but quite cute. It's the sound of it. Isn't it 
relaxing. It's like one of those relaxation tapes you'd get um, to help you get to sleep at night. Just feel the sound soaking through your skin. Don't listen to anything else. Block out the day, block out the night. Imagine you're on a warm beach in the tropical sun. Oh, here comes the spray of the sea. Feel the heat of the sun on your face. Imagine drowning in a bath. That's enough road fighter for anyone, isn't it? Yes, moving on quickly. Yeah, now, okay. Well, you know Punch Out, but there was two versions of Punch Out on the NES. You got the original Punch Out, the classic. You got it in the, in the arcade on the Nintendo 6 coin op. You could play Punch Out, it was quite a big hit. But then they re released Mike Tyson's Punch Out. Same game, just a couple of a new Mike Tyson character to beat up. Uh, but it is, it's, it's a legend. If you own a NES, it's one of the games you want. Mike Tyson's Punch Out. So here you join us for the dream fight. Um, <laughs> they concentrate on the gap in uh, Mike Tyson's teeth. I mean, he's massive. He's absolutely massive compared to uh, Little Mac. But it doesn't matter. Um, he's he's going to have a good go. He jumped. He has to leap to punch Mike in the face. Uh, <laughs> There's no chewing ears off, unfortunately. It, it's a fair fight, it's a fair fight. Because uh, he is massive. Ooh, ooh. Reminds me of that giant Freddy Krueger on the Commodore 64. And there, yes, he's down, he's down. Here comes the. Come on, Mario, count him out. Street gangs! <laughs> Ever been in a street gang? Do you need help being in a street gang? This is like GTA now. This is like GTA in the NES times. <laughs> it's not, is it? Yeah, Street Gang. Oh, yeah, you've got to love the Street Gang. Um, now, this is a really boring game. It's very, very rare for the NES because nobody wanted it. And that is Battleship. <laughs> nobody wanted Battleship for the NES, did they? That is so, you know, that, unfortunately, we. I, I'll, I'll come back to this. There is some games that are very rare because they are so dull. They are so dull. Like... I can't believe, Mum, you bought me a game for Christmas, but it's so dull. <laughs> it's just ridiculous. Can you imagine the disappointment on your face if you got that for Christmas? Battleships on the NES. What? <laughs> yeah, ridiculous. Um, now, here's a really rare game. This is probably the rarest of, in, in the... No, maybe not. Uh, Ice Hockey, but this is an unusual version. Uh, it's a different... It's a Mattel release, but it's PAL. And it's got a completely different label. Uh, yeah, it is ice hockey, um, but it is a GBR UK rarity that you will struggle to find. Now, a couple of weeks ago, maybe three, four weeks ago, I showed you all Alfred the Chicken on the Game Boy, and you all loved it. You went ape for it, and we actually we did sell it. So, yeah, there was people waiting for Alfred the Chicken. Well, what about Alfred the Chicken on the NES? And if just cast your mind back and then compare what it's like on the NES. Yeah, he's a cute chicken. Uh, it's okay, it's a fun platformer. It's okay. Uh, moving on, what about this? Oh, why did I pick this? Disney Adventures. Yeah, this is a, a Disney theme park based adventure game. I don't know, it's released by Capcom. Capcom had rights to all the Disney stuff, didn't they? On the NES. Uh, here's a classic, Gunsmoke. Capcom again. Uh, good arcade shoot. Should we have a look at Gun? It's one of my, I like this. Gunsmoke for the NES. Yeah, Gunsmoke. Yeah, love it. Okay. 
<laughs> not much to say. What about this? Now this is a real classic for all you 8-bit UK gamers. Uh, Elite, David Brabant's a mega space trading, polygon based adventure game. Elite came out for the NES. Most people know that. Um, what does Elite look like on the NES? But it looks like Elite, doesn't it? <laughs> it does really, it looks like Elite. Uh, and there it is, uh, still more. Now this is a, an unusual one, this is a PAL game, this isn't the American version, this is Eliminator Boat Duel. That's unusual, check it out. Eliminator Boat Duel. Yeah, that's an unusual game, isn't it? That is a rare one. I like it. Okay, we're getting there. Uh, Ghosts and Goblins. I've just picked Ghosts and Goblins just so that you know it's here, but I'm not going to bother showing you Ghosts and Goblins. We've shown you it all before, I'm sure. Um, okay, now moving on to some more. There's more NES, more NES, but some more maybe interesting ones. We've got some of these Codemasters games. So this is Cosmic Spacehead. Now I love these because they come in there bespoke, getting around the licensing deal with Nintendo, uh, make their own version of the casing. Uh, but, but of course brilliant Codemasters games. Cosmic Spacehead is a classic. Came out for Master System, came out for Game Gear, came out for Mega Drive, came out for NES. I mean it doesn't matter, 8-bit, 16-bit, they're just going to release it. Uh, good on them. Uh, but they, they've released quite a lot of Nintendo. Uh, nest stuff like this. This is Firehawk. Why don't we check out what Firehawk by Codemasters is like on the NES? This game's more exciting than you expect. It's like a top-down version of Choplifter. Blow up the little tanks. Reminds me of an armor battle on the Vetrex. Now we come to the rescue. The little rope comes down. Uh, we wait for our guys. We're still shooting. You're shooting the helicopters. Trying to protect our little man. Come on, get up the rope, mate. Come on, move it. Oh, I'm taking hits. I'm taking hits. Come on. Uh, yeah, that's a really interesting action shooter. And we're off to rescue someone else. Yeah, very, very interesting and rare game. Uh, more, okay, what about this one? There's another Ultimate Stuntman. Now, they're, they're obsessed by stunt. Loads of Spectrum stunt games, wasn't there, by Codemasters. It's another one of those, uh, but this time for the NES. And it's, I mean, that's, look at that guy. He's like Val Kilmer, isn't he? Well, he looks a bit more like... Harvey Keitel on the actual game screen. <laughs> That's a good quality uh, run and gun, uh, but what about the music? Do you recognise it? I hate to mention Crazy Comics every single episode, but Rob Hubbard should be suing them for this. It looks like it looks like Alien Storm kind of cover, doesn't it? Nothing to do with stuntmen. Yeah, it's got a giant octopus and flames. And... Anyway, interesting. Uh, and finally, this one, MiG-29 Soviet Fighter. That came out on the Spectrum. That is a Spectrum game that is also on the NES, and I like that. Yes, finally, NES versus Spectrum, the face-off. We can do it. So this is MiG-29, the NES version. Um, yeah, it's a top-down shooter. It's got a very familiar soundtrack if you just watched that Stuntman video. So let's head to the Spectrum. Oh, oh, hang on. So this is MiG-29, exactly the same title, exactly the same publisher, Codemasters. Completely different game. This is Afterburner, done blocky style. I like that. Uh, MiG-29, yeah, brilliant. Okay, that's enough of the Codemasters special cards. Um, let's move on and get to some boxed stuff. Uh, well, actually, we'll stick with Codemasters because I've got this one. Now, this game is called Big Nose. <laughs> Big Nose. Uh, I'll show you the box there. Uh, it got a typical Codemasters look about it. Now I like this game, it's released by a company called, it's an American release, 
on the Camerica label. Uh, it's got manual there, very nice condition manual. Uh, gold cartridge, of course, and there's a, there's a star shape in there, so you can arrange it so that the star goes through. But if you have the manual at the front, then the manual fills the gap with the correct picture, which is quite nice. Um, but yes, this cartridge, if you turn it over, yeah, it's got a mode switch, so it actually has got an embed a switch there, you can see right, you see in there. So you can flick between PAL or NTSC, now brilliant, isn't it? That is a brilliant feature to get around the uh, region locking that Nintendo was so vigilant over back then. You know, it was, it's cruel really, it's cruel. Um, and you've got to say, I think, imagine what the import game market might have been like for NES if there was no region locking. Uh, because there were so many titles that the America, the America got that we didn't get. I don't suppose it's really mad because the NES wasn't particularly popular in the UK compared to computer games at the time. Uh, we can't forget that. Um, okay, now I've got a couple of newer games. Now these are homebrew. You know what homebrew is? It's when they make new games for old systems. Now this game is called Haunted Halloween 86. Now there is also a Haunted Halloween 85. Um, I think we should check this one out. Yeah, pretty amazing. Arcade action game, I think you'll agree, and it's beautiful condition. It's got a bit of a novelty cartridge. I'm gonna open this carefully. It's beautiful, it's like brand new. Uh, it's got a bright orange transparent. You get that, don't you, with the old homebrews, do some special stuff that they couldn't do back in the day. Uh, very nice. Uh, this game also came out for Switch. I think you can also get it on the Switch, so isn't that strange? A NES, so I had a NES game on the Spectrum. This came out for both, and now a NES game on the Switch, I mean that's a massive generation gap, it's a bigger generation gap than the Spectrum. Uh, okay, another homebrew, uh, that is called Bass Def Adventures, it's French, let's check it out. Yeah, let's get it out of its protective sleeve, uh, let's have a look at it. Uh, yeah, Bass Def. Uh, beautiful condition again, like new. Uh, I will just get the cartridge out. I know you want to see it. Yeah, you all want to see it. Uh, here we go, and there we have. It's a very quirky, it's a groovy label. I mean, they are just such a good, it's done such a good job of making a new NES game, haven't they? A really good job. It's brilliant. Um, any more NES in the box? I've, I've had enough of NES, Jace. Can we move on? Uh, we will, but <laughs> one more NES game. Uh, and this is a rare one, and this is a game that we actually already had in stock unboxed, but now we've got it boxed. And uh, it is Anticipation. Um, now, <laughs> there can't be a worse word to characterise how you feel about me showing you what Anticipation looks like to play. Uh, before, I, before I show you what the game looks like to play, let me say this game is by Rare. It's by Rare. Check it out. Yeah, it looks a bit like Trivial Pursuit. Um, it's a four player, up to four player family quiz game. Um, you've got to draw, draw one, one of you's drawing the dots, and then one of you's got to guess what you're drawing based on the subject. All, all the info's given to you. Uh, you can't make up your own. You've got to just follow what the game tells you to do. That's right, they went on to do Perfect Dark, Golden Eye, you know. <laughs> uh, this is, uh, you know, Sea of Thieves. This is where it came from. Uh, yeah, it's not the kind of game that you thought it would be, is it? Not from Rare. Um, but super, it is super rare in PAL format. Um, and this is the PAL, and there's the manual. Uh, anyway, uh, you know. It's one of those, if you're a proper diehard NES collector, you'll know how rare that is. Uh, how sought after it is. And, it's, it's, it's a little bit, a little bit <laughs> doggy, a little bit, but it is all there. I mean, that flaps up, but it's still intact. It's not, that's how it's meant to be. That's how it was, it was die cut in the factory like that. That's how it is meant to be. Uh, but yeah, that is enough Ness for any man.
Now, if there's one thing I want to, if I want to drink down after I've had a lot of Ness stuff forced down my throat, <laughs> have I forced this stuff down your throat? Maybe. Uh, it makes a change from PlayStation. I've had a lot of PlayStation lately. Um, that is another format that I really love. Think hard, think hard, and the music will start. Yes! It's Spectrum! Spectrum! Spectrum in the house. We like to see some Spectrum games. Um, now, we had a bit of Spectrum stuff on the site this week. It's, not, it's been a while. It's been a while. Um, and we got some games by a legend. I mean, these go back to my early experiences of the ZX Spectrum, when you was like hanging out in John Menzies, like staring at the tapes, thinking that graphics look amazing, but you're obviously just looking at some artwork. And that is the games of Imagine, and that's pre-Ocean taking over. I'm talking the original Imagine. Things like Zip Zap. Um, now these really literally do feel like rushed out, simple games. Um, but they are the foundation that Imagine was born on. These were successful. Uh, Zip Zap was a big hit. Do you think John Williams got some copyright money for that? <laughs> I doubt it. Um, this is a weird little shooter, really. Uh, wander around. It's, it's not exactly Robotron, is it? Uh, you wander around shooting blobs, collecting the tiles that make the gate for you to go to the next level. It's simple. It, it's okay. It's probably just down to the artwork, isn't it? There is a lovely card. We had it in stock once. There's a card box version of Zip Zap. Uh, let's just show it. Yeah, a card box version. Um, oh, we only have had it in stock once. Um, and I think it probably went too quick, cheap, too cheaply. Um, anyway, I don't know if there is big card boxes of other Imagine titles. But what about this? We could check this one out. Molar Mall. It always made me think, what's that about? It's a, it's a toothbrushing game. Uh, let's check out Molar Mall. Molar Mall. That's a funny name as well, isn't it? Molar Mall. Um, and I've got Stonkers. Now, I bought Stonkers with me pocket money back in about 1982. Um, and it wasn't stonking, it was it? It just it, it made you think it was going to be amazing because it's got tanks on it. And when you're a kid, tanks are incredible. Because unlike every other game released on the Imagine label at the time, this was a strategy game. It was not arcade at all. Uh, it was plotting positions on a map. Uh, and, you know, this is not what I was expecting when I looked at the inlay. Uh, but it was, it was disappointing. Uh, one more, uh, Cosmic Cruiser. Um, let's check out Cosmic Cruiser on the specy. It's a bit rubs, isn't it? They're a bit rubs, but you know, uh, this was, this was a different era. You know, this is when we, I would have bought Cosmic Cruiser back at the time and actually thought, no, this is all right. And I'd have played it for a good, you know, six or seven days nonstop. <laughs> I mean, that's how easily pleased we were in the 8-bit era. Now, I've got some more specky stuff that's not by Imagine. Let's start with this. Pud Pud. Now, Pud Pud is a game that came out by Ocean. Uh, who went on to buy Imagine. Uh, now, Ocean Software, there is quite a few rare titles. Um, some really rare ones. Um, Pud Pud, it is rare, it is rare. It's not like Tank. Tank is the one that everyone goes, oh, I want Tank. Um, let, why don't we, anyway, stop going on, Jace. Just check out Pud Pud. This is the Americana budget version, but it's exactly the same game. Is it Pud Pud? Pud 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 Pud? <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. But I've always loved the look of it and the quirkiness of it. I do think the Ocean original looks better than the budget game, but then you know how I feel about budget games. Uh, okay, moving on. Uh, now, you might have seen some awful, awful trailers. I'm sure it is awful. They only remade uh, Charlie and the Chocolate Factory again. <laughs> Why? Why? <laughs> it was it was awful the last time you remade it, so why would you try again? Just leave it at the original one. <laughs> Mad, isn't it? Mad. Anyway, this is Charlie and the Chocolate Factory, the game! Uh, it is, it is, uh, it's got arcade game elements to it, four arcade games, a multi-screen arcade adventure for the ZX 
Spectrum and I know I would be letting you down if I didn't let you see what Charlie and the Chocolate Factory looks like on the Spectrum. Well, that makes me feel hungry. <laughs> it doesn't really. Uh, I'm always hungry. It doesn't matter. Uh, it is a classic. Now, it is a proper classic. Uh, back to School, the sequel to School Days. We haven't had this in stock for ages. Um, very nice. Uh, beautiful example. Back to School. It was like being in Grange Hill. That's what I always thought. And then they released the game Grange Hill, and you thought, this is like being in a torture chamber. <laughs> I don't know. Great Grange Hill wasn't very good. Uh, was it a Maxon game? Was it a level 9 adventure? Oh, possibly, possibly. I'm thinking EastEnders. It came out at the same time. EastEnders, Grange Hill released the games. Here's another seminal classic. And that is Jet Set Willy 2. Now, for many of my good friends watching this, Jet Set Willy 2 will it feels like a knife in the throat. Uh, never has a sequel to a game been so <laughs> longed for and instantly dismissed at the same time. It's pretty much exactly the same as Jet Set Willy, but with a few extra levels. It was a massive disappointment. And at that time, at that fragile age, we weren't built to cope with massive disappointments. You know, you get disappointing games now. Uh, remember, you know, when Cyberpunk came out, everyone went crazy. Oh, people were like, you know, queuing up to take it back in the sh to the shops. But when you're a kid and you've loved Jet Set Willy and you've played Jet Set Willy to death, then, oh, the new one's coming, the new one's coming out. Oh, and then you get this and you go, oh, oh, it's the same game. It's the same game with a two put on the end. Yeah, it was really, really sad. Okay, a couple more things in mid box. Uh, what about this? This is a CRL game for the Spectrum. Um, it's called The Great Detective. Now this is a really rare, I love this, this artwork, the style of early CRL games. I'm sure they ripped off all this artwork, they didn't pay someone to come, it's too old school. It's like they found it in an old copy of Punch magazine and just thought, well that's out of copyright, we'll nick it. Uh, because I just cannot believe that someone at CRL commissioned an artist to come up with that. I've never seen CRL artwork come up for sale. Uh, but anyway, super rare, 1984. Um, detective game for the Spectrum. Now I'm going to finish on another game, really rare, and it's, it's a budget game. Uh, but it's a game I've only ever had in twice before. It's by, it's on the Dynamite Designs label, and you're thinking, what? And it's called Out for the County. It's a boxing game, let me show you it. Yes, yeah, Spectrum Boxing and Mike Tyson punch out in the same show. Uh, this is a little bit different to Mike Tyson Punch Out. Um, it's got some really grindy, horrible sound effects. I really like the crowd in their little box at the top. They can only move when nobody's punching. <laughs> the, the Spectrum just did not have the energy. Well, the coder did not have the ability to make that crowd work on their own. Uh, out for the count. Oh, no, no, he's up, he's up, he's up. We're still boxing. And you can look at the base, very glossy, it's the late one, is it? Like 1990 around there, I think, uh, something like that. Yeah, 1990, exactly that. Um, but I've never seen another game on this label. Uh, it's like they released one game and it was so awful, nobody bought it and they just thought it went bust. But there was something bugging me about this game, really, really badly bugging me. I'd seen the artwork before, it just looked too familiar. And it made me instantly think Commodore 16. Um, and a Gremlin graphics game. I instantly uh, focused in, and the only game I can think that, is, that I found that is slightly similar to this is uh, Kung Fu Kid. Let's just have a look at the artwork of that. Yeah, side by side, they do look similar, don't they? Um, it's like they're the same artist, like just browsing a game, uh, I spotted the same artist. <laughs> I don't know. I think it just means I'm a genius. I'm just a genius now. I can just spot games and recognise who the artist was who did the, <laughs> did the uh, inlay. Oh, I can't even think of the word inlay. What a genius. Uh, thank you so much for watching. Um, 
I know you won't begrudge me a little bit of a break to work on the Christmas special. It will be worth it. I can't. I just couldn't fit doing the Christmas special in a normal week. So I need to dedicate my normal Friday time to editing and putting that together. Uh, it'd probably be rubbish. <laughs> it'd probably be rubbish. Uh, but I know you will all be there. And there's going to be some prizes. There's going to be some uh, things. It's definitely worth checking out. It's definitely going to be worth checking out. I'm excited about it, even though I haven't recorded a single thing for it yet. <laughs> it really does sound promising, Jace. Well done. Uh, on that note, thank you ever so much for watching. Thank you for all the love you're always sending me, uh, keeping me going. Uh, and sorry about the jumper. Until next week. No, until next time. Happy Retro Gaming, Retro Gamers! I hope you're not too cold standing out there with that box. <laughs> Do you want to borrow my jumper? <laughs>